Muito boa tarde para todos. Nós estamos hoje com o professor Werner Platzer aqui. Ele vem do Instituto Fraunhofer do Chile. Ele é, na realidade, o diretor desse instituto, mas ele é do Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems, lá de Freiburg. Ele vem uh, de Santiago, então, para falar um pouco para nós hoje sobre as atividades que estão sendo desenvolvidas lá no Instituto Fraunhofer do Chile. O professor Platzer é especialista em, em engenharia solar térmica, energia solar térmica, trabalha bastante com CSP e concentração, uh, mas ele vai dar um overview geral do que está sendo feito lá no Instituto Fraunhofer, lá de Santiago do Chile. So Werner, welcome to Florianópolis, thank you for being with us today. Uh, and so we have here uh, our uh, uh, audience here is mostly our PhD, masters and undergrad students and also some colleagues, Professor Elena is here, uh, and we are streaming this live, so there are some other people watching us, uh, and so we expect to have you giving us an overview of what you guys are doing in Chile. Okay, so thank you very much, Ricardo, for inviting me here to Florianopolis and also to giving me the, present, the possibility to present here our center, which we set up about um, three years ago, and I'm not sure, Is it possible to walk around oh, also? Yeah. Because, okay, I like to move. <laughs> so I just put together a, a presentation on, uh, to give you a little bit insight what we are doing. No, it's not a topical uh, presentation. So, um, and we started our activities, you will see later in February 2015. So first, the Fraunhofer idea, and maybe some of you are already in, uh, know that, a little bit uh, organization as you work together with Fraunhofer Ise in Freiburg <laughs> also. Um, I think Fraunhofer uh, Society in Germany is quite a large, a large applied science uh, research organization with 67 institutes and luckily also one on solar, <laughs> so which is in Freiburg. And this uh, always we try to bridge uh, the gap between say universities which are traditionally working very academically in basic research and with industry because Germany is a country which needs a lot of innovation and also in small and medium size, small and medium size companies you need that and therefore the uh, Fraunhofer Society was created after the war to, to, to bridge this gap. Um, in Chile, Fraunhofer is since 2010 There has been a center on systems biotechnology being founded there in Santiago and since 2015 now we have a second center on solar technology where the Catholica is the co-executor, that's the university uh, and you see here a picture of the campus of Catholica in Santiago in Macul and this here is the front of the administration building in Munich. <laughs> um, in a nutshell As we say, we try to bring innovation to the industry and to support industry in innovation. We have to bridge the gap between the basic research and to the product. The innovation means you have a product at the end and it's not just a new idea. And this is the place where Fraunhofer in Germany used to work. Um, of course, you have universities which are more focused on the basic research and there are universities which are also outreaching to, to, the apply, to applying the research and bringing it the transfer of technology and the transfer of knowledge to the industry. So in a way, sometimes we are cooperating, we are using the results, we are also part of the university in Freiburg and sometimes we are also competing. Uh, that's not important. I think you use a, just a map of Germany with all the different institutes or at least points. Here in Freiburg we have the Solar Institute and four other uh, institutes which are quite interesting. Some of them, one of them is for instance Institute for Material Research where you can do corrosion issues on steel or things like that. Then Fraunhofer Chile, some general information We started here uh, with a center of excellence. Chile was calling out for international collaboration in um, a first call for the international centers of excellence in different topics. And here Fraunhofer Chile was funded then as a legal organization because that was a requirement. And then a, system, a center for systems biotechnology was founded 
in 2010. That was a long-term funding uh, with about 10 years. And then there was a second round. Um, and in 2013, we, there was another call, the, the second round. And here we applied again with the good experiences we had and the good resonance we got from Chile. We said, OK, let's try to go in that with solar energy. Why? Because Chile at that time was really sort of uh, first discovering that they have a tremendous solar resource in the country and they wanted to do something in the innovation of solar and why not help them? So that was a good chance. We had a collaborator with uh, Professor Escobar in the university, uh, in the Catholic University. With them together we developed a proposal and then there was a change of government in the, uh, as it is now at the moment, again, <laughs> the case a change of government and it took some time from 2013 November till February 2015 to really implement it. Okay, this is, well, more general. I think you said a half an hour. <laughs> I think I have to focus a little bit uh, and go to the Center for uh, Solar Technology. Some slide, okay. But now what are our challenges in Chile? When we found it, uh, there was a, the, a prospect of a solar boom in Chile. And in fact, there have been a lot of solar projects, especially uh, large PV, large scale PV projects in Chile. But when we came there, part of that was already gone <laughs> to some extent. So there was an economic deceleration. Generally, uh, 2016, there is Chile is one of the countries which have the lowest R&D investment per capita in the world. So there is not a big tradition in investing in innovation. There is uh, a lack of large and dynamic markets which, for, say, for us as R&D institution, there are no producers of technology in Chile. And there is generally a little and critical uh, little mass of companies which are willing to do R&D to invest in R&D. There is bad experience from the past is, a, is one of the motives. But there is also the attitude, if we want to have innovation, we get solutions in the global market off the shelf, and then we put it in the field and it works. So that's the naive approach. And we wanted to avoid that they wake up and see that it does not work. <laughs> so we have to fight against that. Oh. This is now, <laughs> here you see the investment of, uh, per per, uh, say, on, the, on the, the, the gross domestic product. And here, uh, the inverse, the, the, the in researchers. And, and the, uh, so Chile is one of the, of the ones which have a, uh, the lowest numbers of research in activities in the year in the countries. So let's go now to solar. Solar energy in Chile, you see here, you have a very specific thing. It's in the dry uh, belt or in the solar belt it's of, the, of, the, of uh, our globe, of the Earth. So we have a desert area here. And in the desert area, without humidity, you have very low absorption in the atmosphere. And you have a lot, you have no clouds, you have clear days. That means you have a very high solar irradiation. And in fact, it's the, the, the solar direct irradiation measured in the Atacama Desert is the highest one we have worldwide. So that is certainly an advantage for installing or testing also solar systems without the need of government support, of incentives, because the solar resource is much is, for instance, in the terms of DNI, it's about three times higher than in Germany, and even in global radiation, it's much higher. It's about seven compared to three kilowatt hours per square meter in day, in the in the yearly average. The challenges, however, are sometimes because of the high altitude. There is a high UV. There are high temperature gradients. There are dust. There is salt in the air because of the mining activities there. 
and there is water scarcity. So that could be uh, a challenge and we have to investigate it further on. Also the grid integration at the time when we came um, or still we have different grids. Grid, uh, Ch Chile is going from here to here so it's 4,000 kilometers long and you have uh, three, uh, two main grids, one in the north and one in the center region which is the ma major part and then you have a very small one in the south. And in the north, where you have the industrial customers, the mines, you have mainly coal-fired power stations. In the south, where you have the water, the running water power stations, uh, this is not connected to the north yet. And in the north, um, you could have a, a big potential for solar, but what to do with all that? The north is less populated. You have to transport a part of the electricity to the, to the center part to really get good prices. So now let's come to the center. Uh, here are some basic data. Because of the requirements which were set up by the governments, we focus or we, we, we had a very broad focus, I would say. <laughs> we tried to, um, to approach several areas. Of course, the main thing is solar electricity. And in the beginning, they only wanted, because of the high DNI radiation, I said, well, let's focus only on CPV and CSP. As you know, PV since 2012-13 has dropped in prices tremendously. And when we came there, we said, OK, we have to do something on normal, ordinary flat plate PV. So we added that to our proposal or to our work. Then solar heat industrial processes. Everybody was talking. The mines need a lot of energy. Therefore, we have to work also on solar heat for mining processes. In fact, that turns out that maybe agriculture is more eager to take up the thing because they are more flexible and the mining companies are very slow in deciding. Uh, and water treatment because of the scarcity of water is an issue and then we need to talk about, say, grid market integration of solar in into buildings, into the market, into the grid. So uh, within the now nearly three years, we managed to build up a group of about 60 people working for CSET, for, for the solar energy technology, 25 under the realm of Fraunhofer, so under the name of Fraunhofer. So this is the group uh, in summer, well, in winter this year, <laughs> I'm still not used to the southern hemisphere, <laughs> in June, uh, 25 people um, and about 35 people working in different parts of the university also for the same uh, topics. We had some good progress, I think, also within these three years. So we, we, we published papers in conferences, in also in journals. And our economic progress, which for Fraunhofer is certainly important, and also for our funding organization, Corfo, is very important, which is attached to the Ministry of Economy. We got contracts from the industry side and from the public side, which adds to the budget which we have from the basic center funding. Just a bigger picture of that. So I think we built up a quite strong and good team interacting with each other. Uh, we have a mixture of international and national researchers and engineers and also different kind of background from the education. So I think that's a good mix. Also in terms of gendering, it's not bad for, for a science and technology group. There are. Uh, of course, we try also to interact, especially also within Chile, within different, with different universities. We had to find out which university was interesting for us. So one of our, besides the Catholic University, one of our strategic partners was uh, also the University of Antofagasta, because the University of Antofagasta is in the region of the Atacama Desert, and they have a 
so-called PSDA, Plataforma Solar de Desierto de Atacama, and they uh, had there a playground where we could install also technology and test technology in the desert. And therefore we set up some uh, collaboration with them. With other universities we have uh, collaboration within some projects also. We try to publish also, say, not only in scientific, in a scientific sense, but also because um, it is demanded from the political side, but also we want to show to the public in Chile or to interested companies in Chile what are the possibilities of technologies. We produce studies on different technologies in Spanish, which we publish there and we can download from our internet site. So at the moment we have about six six studies on solar thermal for process heat, steam production, and then water treatment techniques and so on. Now, our research lines, I will show you a little bit what we do there. Search line, solar electricity. Um, we, are no, we are doing a kind of application center in our, in our center for solar energy technology. 25 people working for Fraun over there. You cannot compare with the institute like ESA where you have 1,100 people working on different topics. Also from the budget it's of course m smaller so we have to be um, more closer to the application and try to transfer technology and know-how from Germany or from the universities and apply it in the field. So in this way we are uh, working on several field, in several fields, but of course we cannot go very deep in every part. It's more on a system level and an integration level where we do our real work. And we try to support industry in the, in the way that we set up also a testing uh, equipment, that we have testing equipment and try to do measurements in the field. We have no laboratory, our own, not our own laboratory in the center, but we have to go to the field, we have to go to customers to test equipment there. And we look into their problems and also help them with simulation, with in identifications of failures and so on. And in the long term, of course, also the adaptation of technology is an issue. Uh, for instance, when we do corrosion, uh, research also together with the university. And more practical things, soiling investigations are an issue where we say, okay, we can, we can work together with the companies, we detect what's the soiling effect, how much does it deteriorate the output of uh, a string, and how often now can you have, do you have to wash the, the modules in order to get a better output. So also one of the project projects was developing a software, having all the information on the economic market, on the spot market, and using this information to show for the company, do we need to wash the module, which is expensive, or can we leave it still? In the solar heat field, um, as I said, mining was the focus in the beginning and we tried to approach all the mining companies. They were all interested, but they never gave us money to do some installation. And now we are trying to work instead a little bit more with the agro and food company and so we can do s smaller projects with them, but we at least we get a foot into the, in the industry and try to demonstrate small projects. One of them is here uh, in the winery, um, Miguel Torres. A polygeneration project, so we use heat, uh, solar heat, and so uh, and do it use it in the summer for cooling of certain uh, uh, reservoirs, and in the winter for heating them. In the membrane distillation, uh, there, are there or in the water treatment, we have two technologies which we can transfer from Germany to to Chile and we are working with feasibility studies to sort of convince uh, industries to use them in different areas. One of them is the membrane distillation which uses low grade, low temperature thermal heat in order to evaporate the water through a membrane. 
uh, and there it, this is a technology which is especially favorable when you have a high concentration of salts in the water or we use uh, reverse osmosis uh, with driven by PV or wind um, and here the, the, the energy you need for desalination is proportional more or less to the salt content of the water so they can be used also as a combination sometimes in projects and for membrane distillation that's a very uh, flexible tool or a very flexible technology we are also trying in Germany to investigate a little bit more what we can we do with industrial wastewater uh, to extract also some waste again from the wastewater which is valuable to recycle it in the industry and um, well, also in Chile, we think we can do maybe something in this, uh, in this part as well with the industries there, with winery, paper industry, and at some time with mining as well. And then we have the business integration, which also looks into the market and has to um, have a pulse in or to, to hear what really industry needs in the or the central uh, uh, regulator needs and they try to, 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 to collect information in order to be able to respond to the needs in the industry. <coughs> Here you see just the, the problem of the decoupling of the solar uh, of, the, of the northern and the central grid in, uh, in Chile which leads to different prices in the market at the moment and when there is a there's a plan to bring these grids together now next year and in from this time I think the production in the northern grid could be more uh, uh, economic because and from then on they need also to clean the modules more often so some first project I think um, one of them which is a nice project because we really did some installations three installations of so-called agro PV, the combination where you have photovoltaic panels above your plants, so a double use of land, and we have different plants below these panels. So with our center for biotechnology, they monitor the plant growth and how that changes with the different shading situation. And we also monitor humidity in the soil and, uh, of course, also the output of the PV power plant. At the moment, we work with very conventional uh, steel construction, but in the future, we will also want to see whether we can uh, use more local materials or people can do more on a, on a self, uh, do-it-yourself basis also and try to invest that. Also, we need to build up a database which plants are using how much shade and uh, from when on it's getting uh, uh, so it depends really on on the, on the on the region on the plant on the irradiation on the shading part so it can be a quite a lot of research which can be done here and this is actually nothing which where they do a lot of work in Germany so we can add here a substantial contribution in Chile really Uh, that I uh, have shown you just to see we have here a, a, a project which where our part was only 25,000 euros or dollars in order to do some consulting and failure detection and we found some failures only we did not have the money to cure them so that was another problem of course <laughs> that you need some additional investment then. Um, other studies we do is look for instance here on a, for a mining company what is the potential for the area they have in their mine and what is the potential for wind electricity what prices could be produced there and we hope that with this kind of small studies theoretical studies we can make them an, uh, we can create an appetite of the company to really invest also in technology and from then on we could support them with designing the plants with uh, monitoring them, with improving them, and so on. One of the mining applications which could be interesting, but it depends also on the, on the copper price worldwide, is uh, 
this project where you have a bio-leaching reactor. Uh, this has been developed, it is a technology which has been developed by a co company Pucobre in, in uh, Chile and you need to have a temperature management of this reactor because there are bacteria inside which sort of produce or, or, or facilitate the production of copper uh, out from the oxides and therefore, no sorry, these are sulfides, <laughs> out of the sulfides and when we can support them by making uh, or raising the temperature with solar that could be a possibility to raise the productivity and then you have solar not raising or so, uh, only saving cost which is usually not so interesting for these companies but to raise the productivity a few percent would be an enormous interest so that's a potentially very interesting technology but it depends on the different copper ores you build in the or you, you take from, from the ground um, whether it's more oxide or more sulfide and it depends on uh, the copper price which is at the moment at about 50% of what it has been a few years before so maybe that will change again in future and the interest will raise ah sorry that's a repetition um, one of the business development projects we are supporting also Fundacion Chile in a the innovation platform where we try to make a matchmaking platform for suppliers and users of the technology and to give them a little bit guideline and an overview over the market what is available in Chile locally what is has to be sourced outside and what are the needs of the industry so that maybe small companies start developing uh, individual solutions like cleaning solutions for PV panels this was the software or this is the software I mentioned already where we try to optimize uh, sort of the soiling of, of a PV plant this was done for NL green power and uh, we have developed the software for taking the market information to optimize that and that can be used also for other power plants it was a good collaboration with the, with the uh, university and that is now sort of we can license that and use it also for other power plants so you see we <laughs> we start with very small very small projects with a few thousand euros just to support some studies to look into problems and then we have we have some uh, interaction with the companies and then they say yeah very interesting uh, and then it takes two years time so <laughs> it's it's not easy and therefore I think it was very helpful these three years to get a support from the government to really be able to establish an operation because no company believes you that you can do something very positive if you don't have reference projects now we have say our first reference projects in the field we know we have another project, we won a project also together with uh, other universities and international players like ESC Constance and Ines in France on the development of a PV module for the desert of Atacama so we get our foot into larger projects also public uh, funded projects and so we are looking quite optimistically into the future and now we have a <laughs> phase where we say okay now we have to apply for the second phase otherwise our money will be cut to zero and we have a problem so that's what we did now and then they ask what are you going to do in future we started very broadly and now we wanted to focus a little bit more we have identified some issues on what did what did we identify we said okay let's streamline a little bit our organization we only have one research group which is called photovoltaic system and one research group which is solar thermal systems and actually when we do membrane distillation uh, that as an industrial process we, tr we treat that within the solar process heat and we have some issues which are short term which can uh, where we can do short term projects together with industry because they are interested in very short duration projects that durability assessment 
quality assessment, measurements, testing in the field, and you can do some system optimization for specific projects like PVRO or hydrogen generation with photovoltaics or uh, maybe distributed uh, generation with batteries where you have increased the level of your auto consumption. This is something where then in Chile we have to look into the regulatory field, not only in the technical field and so on. And in solar process heat that's also something where in principle the technology is there, you only have to import it to produce a system out of that, a good system to design it very well and then to demonstrate it that it's working and then it could be a sort of uh, effect of copying it again in other in other parts of the industry. And then there's a long-term development that's a political aim of Chile to develop CSP further on and especially the storage part here because they have the nitride for the molten salt technology in Chile in the solar fields and therefore here we'll re certainly will rely on government research and government programs. And there is a trans Universal project, many problems are very similar, solar irradiation, soiling, uh, corrosion issues you have to investigate for PV and for solar thermal systems, so don't duplicate that. We do that in a so-called transversal project and actually here most of our university colleagues are working also in these transversal topics. So first work package or is the optimization of specialized PV systems and looking into the o operation and maintenance of that and the second and there, there is the part where we really want to do uh, uh, our own research together with ESA is this agro PV development imagine that in agri agriculture you have now the step to agriculture 4.0 where you lose use intelligent sensors drones whatever in automized, automatized projects and you need an energy supply for that and that can be done within a own uh, structure in this kind of agro PV systems. Also water pumping or things is, are, is interesting, use of other materials like organic PV f uh, films could be uh, investigated. What's the spectral impact of uh, organic PV on a, on a tomato plant? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> So there are a lot of questions here which we can use and then we have a project which is a sort of a very ambitious <laughs> but we don't do a lot of work, we are just trying to make up a business plan here. Chile offers to, ha to sell lithium to a local production cheaper than the world market. So this is an opportunity. When we, can we have developed technology and we have system technology in Fraunhofer ISA in Germany if there would be a business case here which we have to explore within this work package then there could be a possibility to set up with international investors and in international companies a, a, a battery factory in Chile. <laughs> so our idea here is not to do the really the research on that but to look into the business case and see if it's possible, yes, and we can convince people to invest, then we do it and then I think there would be a large project for the future and it needs a lot of money. If not, we just stop it. So, uh, okay, this is just doing some work on testing and in different levels. Um, on, the CP, uh, on, the, on the CSP, one of the main fields is the work on the electric, uh, on the, on the high temperature storage together with the University of Antofagasta and within the, our Catholic University we do some corrosion research on molten salts. The idea is that lithium salts, lithium nitrate salts uh, reduce also the corrosion to some extent in the, for construction materials so you can use possibly cheaper construction materials, cheaper steels for the whole systems but lithium nitrate is more expensive than the other nitrates usually used. So you have a trade-off that needs some investigation, uh, experimental on, on the economic side, and also we have the approach of uh, single sto tank storage. We, at the moment, the commercial solution is a system which is called 
two tank storage, a cold tank with 290 degrees and a hot tank with 390 degrees. And uh, with a single tank, you can maybe uh, reduce the costs. If also another possibility is to use local filler materials in order to increase the thermal capacity. So there are some ideas here, but as usual, we try to explore ideas. And if they are not successful, we have to step back and say, OK, let's focus on another thing. That's uh, a bit a different way of working than in a tr traditional, say, university research group. And solar heat for processes, industrial processes, I think there are possibilities. But we need a good case demonstration because at the moment the trust in this technology is extremely low in Chile in solar thermal at all. Uh, in any case, whether concentrating or non-concentrating, they have very bad experience from the past. And you know why? <laughs> because uh, of their attitude, <laughs> usually. Because always the cheap solution is the best, and the cheap solution always fails. Therefore, they have bad experience, and we have to show them it's possible to do it really right. And this is, uh, say, we have to go over this uh, barrier to really convince people there. So the transversal projects um, well, are more methodolog me methodology, which can be used straight away. We need to develop uh, monitoring uh, GIS tools for identifying potentials and so on. And we have to do also some system analysis. We want to extend our work here, especially in Chile. They are always talking, especially only on electricity, but we know that electricity is not the only solution. You should look also, especially for this large country, also in uh, fuel production by renewables and to see whether maybe also what so we have uh, the question of inclusion of the heat, gas, and fuel system in the scope of studies in the system analysis. And we have models for that developed in Germany, but we could transfer them maybe to Chile. And we have to interest, in this case, probably a customer like the Ministry of Energy. So that's something to be done here. And I am personally, I, I was there, in, or I am still there, but only until the end of the year in Santiago for building up the center. And now this person, uh, Frank Dinter, is taking over as my successor <laughs> for, the for the next phase. Uh, he has some good experience in CSP, but also, for instance, in fuel cells, in energy, uh, RWE, something like NL or uh, NG. <laughs> Um, so I think he's a good link between academic world and industry. And I think he will lead also this group to further bigger projects with increasing confidence of the industry in our work. And what we want to do is also, and we have a collaboration agreement here with the university that we want now, when we, as we are established, to extend really our activities and really collaborate a little bit more to exchange persons. I think this is one of the reasons why I'm here and we want to discuss that. Because we have a lot of work to do together. If we can do it, we can do it maybe faster. So thanks for your attention. Thank you, Werner, for this very uh, quick introduction of what you're doing uh, at Fraunhofer Chile. So we have questions here in the platea. OK, if you want a microphone. There is a question from somebody who is watching you. Ah, OK. Apresenta a pessoa também para a gente.
That's a question for you. Okay, now we don't have any, up to now we don't have any PV integration project to inspire digesters, so I actually I have no uh, no specific knowledge on biodigesters, so, but I think that is something which is very similar. They, they should probably work with very stable conditions normally, and PV does not provide stable conditions, but plug 2 8 is the same system like electrolysis with hydrogen or reverse osmosis. You always have a, a process which likes to have a constant input of power, and then you have to work with PV. And this you have to optimize with the control system and trying to, to, to increase the lifetime of the system. Yeah, or, or have some so buffer. It, you I, need I some buffer. I see some parallelity, yeah. but I, specifically here I don't have uh, yet experience. Okay. Uh, in your uh, concept of, of using CSP in Chile, uh, it seems to me that because of the irradiation levels, it makes so much more sense than to, uh, to put PV for which there is no uh, not much experience on the long term uh, performance of PV under so such harsh harsh conditions. So uh, since CSP is very established also, why hasn't any CSP project really gone ahead uh, in Chile? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, you, you know the world market of PV and of, of CSP and you see that there's about a, a factor of I think about 100 between them in, in terms of accumulated installation and PV is running faster and faster and CSP is going slowly. I mean, luckily China decided to, to invest in CSP and therefore there are projects going on worldwide. So the prices of CSP are coming down. When you had the, uh, the big rush in CSP that was due to the funding possibilities in Spain, um, the prices were at about uh, 25 cent euro cent per kilowatt hour or 250 dollars uh, per kilowatt hour whatever um, so this is too high and it was due to the funding uh, scheme so there was clearly a political um, I think it was a, cl a political mistake to do it this way how they did it there not adapting the price and, and, and trying to force the companies to produce more cheaper since this economic crisis in Spain, the market in Spain was more or less dropping out. Companies from Spain tried to put works or put projects worldwide, South Africa, India, um, also in Chile with Atacama One, with the solar tower project. So there is a, or Australia, so there is a push to, to, to lower prices. And in Chile, actually, uh, we got now this. Uh, in the last auction in November, I think, or was it the yeah, in November this year, um, Solar Reserve as a tower developer, Solar Tower developer, was uh, uh, bidding for fifty-two dollars per megawatt hour, and nevertheless they didn't get it because PV was bidding for twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here so this is six years ahead. Okay. So I think the message is we CSP can, can get down. You know, the Sunshot program of the United States said we want to have a target price of $50 per megawatt hour. The technology reaches it, but then you have to see how the market is responding. And in Chile, you have the strict philosophy that there is no intervention from the government. So they will not give any incentives at all for no, no technology. Market is everything. And this is very difficult to develop in an early stage for a technology. The only chance is, I think, and that's the long-term vision of the government, that due to the fluctuation, you need some storage in the system. Mm -hmm. So the one bet is electrochemical storage will win. The other bet is CSP will win. But the need for that, according to the long-term vision of the, of the government in Chile, is that you need that maybe 25, 29. So in, in, in about 10 years' time, if there are some companies left at that time, you can do it. Yeah, true, <laughs> so this is, the, this is the political problem. It's a very big risk to bid for PV at 21 cents or $21 yes, yes, per megawatt hour. I think so, but 
you first you have to make say a negative um, um, experience and then you see it's not working this way then and then maybe the government reacts again I think in terms of regulation they are thinking about now how to value how to evaluate also the, the storage capabilities so that might help uh, this 50 cents was with storage the CSP yes yes okay yeah. but actually it's also it's also a com combined hybrid CSP PV plant mm -hmm. so I think it's um, 150 megawatt tower and 150 so 100 megawatt or 120 megawatt PV so it's a mixed plant Alguma outra pergunta mais? Sem perguntas. Oh, I have another question about the soiling. Mm -hmm. The soiling, we are seeing a lot of soiling in some of the projects that we have here in Brazil. And the soiling is very different depending on where you are mm -hmm. in, in, in this country. Uh, in, in Chile, uh, the soil uh, is typically sandy soil. What, what kind of uh, uh, soiling uh, countermeasures do you take? It's washing modules with water, cleaning them? Yeah, dry yeah. cleaning. What, what is the the, the solutions that no, you are, are seeing? At there. the moment, there are several, uh, say, companies trying to develop cleaning solutions, washing solutions. Because usually, when you go to say uh, Intersolar Europe and uh -huh. you see the 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 washing uh, rigs, the equipment, mm -hmm. they usually use uh, water. Yes, yes, yes uh, they use water enough to know. Yeah, but in in many of these places, there is no water. So, well. Yeah, you have water, but the water is uh, costs. So the question is to use less water and to have a more efficient technique. At the moment, they use the, the, the trucks with the rotating brushes mm -hmm. very often in the, in the fields. Which is still using water. Yeah. yeah. But at least they are not just spraying it. Oh, yeah, yeah. which and would be... And, and there is a company, Adrox, trying to develop, say, an anti-dust coating. Mm -hmm. Um, but we haven't had yet results on that. Uh, so are you involved? Is, uh, is Fraunhofer Schiele doing any uh, research on, on this soiling and, and uh, ways to avoid the soiling? We had applications which were uh, not uh, granted <laughs> together with companies. Mm -hmm. uh, one application was uh, on, a, on a film which we would, should apply also in existing plants in the field with a say a durability of two to three years, a very cheap solution, but we should reduce the um, we should reduce the soiling. We only did some preliminary tests and we found out that in Santiago it was counterproductive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the kind of soiling. Yes. Um, mm. and um, also it's a diff it's a diff it's not a desert climate, it's also it has some rain, it has some aggressive industrial atmosphere. Mm. And in the desert, we wanted to prove it and want to do more investigation, but we didn't get any grant, or the company didn't get any grants, as the company was a small company. Um, they, well, they didn't do the research then. Okay, I'm sure this is a topic that we can mm -hmm. are very much interested in, in discussing yeah. more with you. And there are many companies in Brazil mm -hmm. that uh, have the, the research funds to do that and will mm -hmm. probably have that problem and uh, yeah, yeah. this is a, a, a problem to be tackled here in Brazil. At the moment we are just with one company, a small, also a small company in, from Arica, from the uh, mm. north of Chile, yeah. we are trying to help them in developing a, a robot for cleaning. So everybody has a different approach there, we will see which one is the better yeah. one. I mean... Okay, more questions? In that case, we thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>